Jai Ram. Welcome to the 123rd edition of Samarpan, which also coincides with our 75th Independence Day celebrations. Today we have a very distinguished speaker, Shri Mohan V. Raman. The Mohan V. Raman family, as Swami himself disclosed to them, they were associated for seven generations before and seven generations after, which covers almost thousand years of a lifespan. How the Raman family each had their intimate and one-to-one -one association with Bhagwan is something we must cherish and hope to emulate as a family. When the mother is worried about the son and his future studies and he is not even in the orbit of Bhagwan, Swami comes and blesses the mother. How Swami blesses his wife, how Swami blesses Mr. Raman. I think as we listen to this fascinating tale of experiences of Bhagwan, and as Mr. Raman himself mentions, to go back in time and reminiscence of all these wonderful experiences, which is a sheer joy to behold. I think without taking much of the time, I would request all devotees to please enjoy this special 123rd edition of Samarpan, which also con coincides with the Independence Day celebrations. And in Swami's own words, I am your true friend and I will always be with you, irrespective of your valid size. So let us welcome the illustrious family of Mr. Mohan V. Raman. He has recorded this during the pandemic's time on Amavasya day after doing Tarpanam, which is a very, very auspicious thing to do, remembering and prostrating before our forefathers. So welcome to Sri Mohan V. Raman family. In the mundane realm, he did his B.Sc. Physics from Loyola College, he did his MBA program from XLRI Jamshedpur. He has done more than 120 films and 5,000 TV serials, a distinguished actor of repute, an excellent devotee of Bhagwan, and as mentioned before, dating back to 14 generations. So let us enjoy this 123rd edition. Of Samarpan. Jai Sai Ram. Om Sri Sai Ram. My humble pranams to the lotus feet of Bhagwan. At the outset, I'd like to thank the organizers of uh, Samarpan for giving me this opportunity to share with all of you uh, what I consider the biggest blessing that our family has had for, as Swami himself told me, seven generations before and seven generations after, which means 14 generations. And mind you, 14 generations covers over a thousand years. In order that you understand my story, you must first know a little bit about me and my family background. My father, late Sri V. P. Raman, was a enormously successful competent, talented advocate. In the sense, he became advocate general when he was less than 50. He became the public prosecutor of the Madras state, the Tamil Nadu state, 
when he was 34 or 35 or something like that. And he became uh, the additional solicitor general for Mrs. Gandhi uh, in 1975. And in uh, 1975, he must have been uh, 32 born, 40, mid 40s. He started life with the communists. Later, he joined the DMK party, which, as you know, is an atheist party. So my father was uh, a non-believer. So was his father, late Sri A.V. Raman, who was also a civil engineer, sanitary engineer from who studied in UK way back in 1905 or 1910 or something like that and worked with the government of Madras presidency as it was then known under the British, fought with the British, left his job, very close friend of Rajaji. As a family, we are a very well-known family, I, though it looks very odd on uh, uh, social media or whatever media we want to call this for me to blow the trumpet about my own family but I think this background is very important because you will realize uh, the value my grandfather himself was an agnostic a non-believer of sorts so was my father I was brought up by my father's mother that is Mrs. A.V. Raman the grandmother she was a very, very pious lady and therefore, even as a child, I was given stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata and I was a very uh, pious kid, to use the words correctly. Uh, both my younger brothers were brought up more by my father, so uh, they were uh, not so much. They still aren't that much into religion. Uh, formal religion. Not that they are non-believers. They are not into the formal religion of puja and all this. Like We are recording this on the Amavasya day which is uh, in August and uh, Amavasya is as you know the day we do Tarpan, Tarpanam in uh, Tamil which is the offering to all our ancestors. So in a way, it's very appropriate that I start this uh, program with an offering to my ancestors, all of who, whose combined punya and blessings brought me to the lotus feet of Bhagwan. It may all be according to a plan he devised Thousands of years ago. So, that apart, <clears throat> I still owe that blessing to my parents. My mother comes from an orthodox family. A very orthodox, very pious, very religious family. Her uh, grandfather was a very famous uh, Indian uh, personality. You could probably Wikipedia him because that's the best way you guys can refer. His name was Right Honorable D. S. Srinivasa Sastri. He was known as the Silver Tongued Orator, a man whose English uh, was supposed to have stumped people like Churchill and others. He attended the roundtable conference and so on and so forth. Now, all this is just a background. How did Swami come in? Oh. Every time I say this, I feel ashamed. I feel a little... Uh, what should I say? I feel terrible. I was a completely anti-Swami person. Anti. Now, you could be neutral. You could say, I don't know anything about this uh, Baba. 
So I am not. No, I was one of those who was a volatile vocal critic. How do I start? Okay, the story goes back and forth. Bear with me. It will be like one of those um, uh, Christopher Nolan films, you know, with lots of up and down. So that is some time in 1980s. By 1980s, okay, I would have been um, <clears throat> one evening, I was going out. Oh, I must also tell you that uh, in those days, I was a, a chain smoker. I was also a very, very, very heavy drinker. Party animal, so to speak. I still go to, to social locations. It's not that I don't, but uh, you must realize my my background. Uh, my house was something which was a very open house. So I used to sit with my father and have a drink, or I used to smoke in front of him. We had no problems. So to my younger brothers, it was very. Open kind of atmosphere. The mid eighties. One day, my I was going out. As I was reversing the car out, suddenly the the person the the, the 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 grand down, and he said uh, something is wrong with uh, your dad. I said, what? He said, he's fallen down. Okay. Pick him up. He says, no, he's not. He's not responding. He's like in uh, some kind of a daze. And I quickly stopped the car in the gate and uh, found him in a fit, like the epileptic fit. He, he was having a fit and he was frothing in his mouth and um, it bit his tongue and uh, not knowing what to do I quickly called my uncle who immediately organized an ambulance and he was loaded in the ambulance and taken to the hospital it was the hospital in uh, Nungambakam it was called the Lady Wellington nursing home and Dr. Krishna Rao was the person attending he comes he says I, I not the days where you had scans and this and that you know in every hospital so scan was in one or two places in Chennai so he said let's wait let's they'll just decided but then I quickly uh, having admitted him I went about my work, I called my grandmother. That's my father's mother. She used to stay in an ashram um, some maybe 20 kilometers from the city, uh, heart of the city. Uh, it's in a place called Thirumullai Vayal. There is a Vaishnavi temple and she used to stay there. She had built a small cottage. My father had built her a small cottage because she was not very happy with uh, living in the city called a uh, come over in the night around uh, 10 ish 10 little later my wife uh, of course she didn't tell me then my grandmother had gone to my mother was there. My my wife was uh, had a dream that night of somebody in an orange robe and uh, 
hair like this, coming and saying, don't worry, I'll look after him. And probably just as she has had the dream, a few minutes later, I get a call from my uncle, who was my father's cousin, first cousin, and who's the doctor of the family. He calls up and says, I got a news from the hospital that he's not doing well. Come, let's go see him. So the drive, I picked him up from his house. And by the time we went, it was maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes from the time I, he got the call. I go to the hospital and I see my father completely awake. In fact, he was behaving a little oddly because he was jumping on the bed. The person whom uh, some time back, one side of the body was not responding, who, whose face had gone all right. And we were wondering if he's ever going to recover the use of speech and everything. Here this man was shouting and jumping on the bed. And the doctor and the nurses had a tough time trying to control him. They finally managed to bring him down and gave him a sedative and made him go to sleep. My wife tell me about this dream, about this orange robed figure telling her, don't worry, I've saved him. And um, that was okay. We, 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 we uh, just did a few tests the next day and third day he was back home. My wife wanted to know who this person was. This orange robed afro hat person. She remembered one of her colleagues. She, my wife used to work for a company called Air Lanka. She was in the office as the reservations and ticketing staff. And uh, she remembers seeing a picture of this person in one of her colleagues bags. So she called her and said, you remember that picture, you show it to me. Hey, who is this? She, that lady said, this is Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. It's also known as the Puttaparthi Sai Baba. Then my wife remembered having heard this name before. And then she said, uh, can I have a picture of his? And slowly, very slowly, she started learning more about Swami and picking up things. And this used to lead to massive fights because she never told me about this dream of hers. And uh, I used to chide her for being a follower of such God men and this and that. And the, and the usual uh, criticism that, you know, these are not miracles, this, that, everything. It so happened that I have had a very close friend of mine called Mahesh, who later on became a music director and uh, a fabulous guitarist. And uh, his wife, Chitra, used to work for the Hindu. Her sister was my wife's colleague. You get the link now. Chitra was a huge very, very big uh, Swami devotee. And Swami loved her like crazy. So whenever she went, he used to say, come, come. So that was the link which my wife established and she got pictures and books and stuff like that. And slowly one day, Swami's picture came in my puja and I got upset. I, I took the picture, I threw it out. I said, no pictures of men, this, that, the other. And my wife took the picture and put it in her cupboard and said, this is my cupboard. You have no business to come here. 
if you want you control the general place tell me what i can do in my cupboard and this went on went for some time and uh, middle of 19 no towards the end of 1985 there was this industrial fair or something like that happened abitsbury abitsbury is a kalyan mandap which was gifted to swami by tarapurs i go there for, to attend the industrial fair as i think i saw one and i saw a picture of baba and i just thought to myself one necessarily i've been fighting with my wife why can't i get her a picture so i i bought one or one of those uh, tin it was a metal sheet literally a sheet of metal in which there was print there was a print of swami with some words in the bottom so i just thought i'll please her i bought that and gave it to her vaikuntha ekadashi day of 1985 i have a dream the dream was uh, swami is in color robe and i never i have never seen swami i have never seen a video of swami rarely seen a picture or two maybe in my life and i never knew he wore white when that he wore white on his birthday etc nothing i never knew that. and uh, is swami is walking in the beach marina beach with a number of uh, foreigners and he's talking to them and i go near him and uh, he says come come rara calls me and he's talking to me and the next thing i know he's sitting down and singing bhajans and then um, he comes and he opens a drawer and takes out a watch and says no no it's not yet time for you wait and then puts it back and then goes away i wake up in the morning i tell my wife that uh, i had a dream of your baba she said what i am the person who is worshiping him he never came in my dream he's come in your dream so he said uh, she said uh, how lucky you are i said what luck yaar there's no luck in it so must have you must have said something about him it must have triggered uh, the memory and uh, subconscious and it must have come all sorts of justifications no no it is said that when baba comes in a dream it is a real event he is come he is come to speak to you i said come on i i don't believe all this uh, um, if you tell me tomorrow morning mahatma gandhi came in your dream gandhi came is it or hitler comes hitler comes in your dream i don't believe all this if your baba came in my dream let him prove it to me the arrogance of youth i said okay let him prove it and left it at that that evening i go pick her up from her office i come home nobody was at home this was around uh, 23rd 24th of december uh, 85 on the 7th december my younger brother immediate younger brother had got married uh, so he and his uh, wife had gone off on their honeymoon my father my mother and my younger brother we are three three sons my youngest brother the three of them had gone for a holiday to singapore just me and my wife and my son we were alone at uh, the house in the house and um, that evening i was sitting as i told you earlier i used to drink so i had poured myself a drink and um, i was drinking actually yes yes and uh, i get a call from a good friend of mine saying uh, mohan are you at home i said yes i am at home in those days no cell phone it all had to be in this dialed phone i said yes i am at home 
He said, I'm sending my office boy. There has been a mistake. I said, what mistake? You know, your brother's wedding video, which I sent. Yeah, you sent it two days ago. It's there. I haven't seen it. He said, that's not your brother's wedding video. By mistake, that video has gone to somebody else and their video has come to your house. My office did a mistake in putting the label. So I said, uh, so what? What's this video? He said, forget it. You won't like it. I said, what is this video? He said, this is, uh, I went to Puttaparthi. I covered uh, the 60th birthday celebrations. So I'm sending this person, this Major General Mahadevan's video has uh, come to you. And uh, your wedding has gone to General Mahadevan. Major Mahadevan was the then president of the Satya Sahaja. And uh, I got the shock of my life because exactly some time back I told my wife, if your Baba has come to me in my dream and it is a real incident, let him prove it. I have never had this problem or anything and suddenly this friend calls and says, send this video back. So I told uh, this friend of mine, I said, uh, Rajkumar from Photo Emporium, Mount Road uh, devotees, photographers. So I told Raj, I said, Raj, uh, can you send your man after some time? He said, why? No, no, please send him after some time. He said, okay. I'll send him in the morning. I said, yes, please do. Have him collect it. I took this video cassette and I played it. And there it was. Swami's 60th birthday celebrations. And being 60th birthday, he was wearing white. I told you in my dream he was in white. Then I saw everything that was that I saw in my dream of a person of God, but of a person I have never met or seen or heard in my life. Everything was identical. The voice was the same and the way he sang the bhajans was the same. Because there in the, in the cassette he was singing bhajans. And he was doing all the things which I saw him do in my dream. Things like, you know, writing in the air and doing this. And I was completely shell-shocked. I, I had no explanations. And I didn't know what to say. I just uh, kept uh, saw the cassette fully. Removed it, kept it aside, and quietly just said, uh, I'm sorry, I, I must have spoken something which uh, I don't want to. I, I, I will not talk about you in future. Sorry. Couple of days later, uh, this is, uh, as I said, 24th, 25th of December. Yeah. Couple of days later, uh, I attended a party and as you know in parties things happen and I had a very bad next morning. Severe stomach pain. Severe stomach pain. The first time I didn't know what to do because I had to go to the bank to sign checks, collect cash, distribute it to my uh, workers in my factory for their pungal. It was a pungal advance I had to give and I had to go. Personally, I had to go to the bank. And I, I couldn't get up from the bed. So that is when I quietly, my wife had gone to the office, I quietly prayed to Swami and said, look boss, my wife believes you do miracles. Uh, I'm not asking this for myself, but there are at least 8 to 10 families whose pongal depends on me going to the bank now. So please cure the stomach ache for 2 hours. I will go finish my work and then 
if you want to give the stomach ache back you give it stomach ache went i went to the bank drew the money went to the office gave it to everybody work went on out of the blue in a couple of days my wife's uh, colleague sister chitra and her husband mahesh my friend call me and say mon we are going to puttaparthi would you like to come by then i was a little uh, i had softened my approach and uh, i was not anti i may not be very heavily pro but i was an anti so i said okay let's go so we both go my wife and i we flew madras bangalore on the 14th morning and 14th we took a car from puttaparthi uh, four of us and drove uh, for, sorry from bangalore to puttaparthi i suddenly discovered uh, an old very old diary of mine where i had written down some notes about swami this that and in that yesterday for the first time i found i found the bill of this uh, travel company for my trip to puttaparthi first trip to puttaparthi thanks to you guys uh, samarpan people i discovered an old diary where i had noted down every day notes my dreams where swami comes and i spent last night reading it and reliving memories anyway i'll come back to it so 15 1 cost of one private car hire 900 and 940 rupees was the charge from bangalore to puttaparthi and back anyway we go we go to puttaparthi and as i said chitra mrs mahesh is a very was the pet of swami swami gets these pets you know literally like a house pet he'll get pets they'll be pets for some season that's all you mustn't think it's permanent you'll be a pet for some season that's your blessing that is the blessings of your forefathers and uh, all that so he is just giving you that quota it is not a lifetime quota very few people who unless they serve him like maybe mr sinivasan of insulators or even mr sinivasan of insulators used to be have his uh, off season and on seasons i mean if you go close the closer you go to swami it's fire you must stay little, that that little respectable distance away then you are safe because if you go very close you get you are bound to get burnt and he says you are to get burnt anyway let's not get into the philosophy so we go there and uh, she goes and meets mr kutumbarao who was the head there there were two people kutumbarao and chiranjeevi rao both are known as sairam and um, kutumbarao gave a small chit which said uh, please sit in a prominent place so we went to the hall the the, the present uh, hall outside uh, the mandir was in there we had to go to the auditorium and we sat there swami came gave a big lecture this was on pongal day as he said 14th of january 1986 gave a lecture and then sang i was in because the singing the singing voice everything i had seen in my dream i didn't know i i i was in a sort of a zombie state next morning we went for darshan and uh, mahesh who had gone with chitra earlier to puttaparthi said keep a look out on the lady's side in case you see my wife and your wife get up if they are going getting up and going towards swami's room then that means we have to also get up from here 15th morning 
we are sitting. Suddenly, I say, "Hey, that looks like uh, Padma. That looks my wife, and that looks like Chitra." He said, "Yeah, yeah, Chitu only. Come, come." So we both get up and quietly wend our way into the veranda and sit outside the door. Eighteen hours after my first arrival, after my first step in the holy soil of Puttaparth, so I'm sitting like this. How how can I face him? What all I've said? So I'm just sitting like this. Swami finishes the darshan all round, all round. But by the time he comes here, yet. So many letters in his hand, you know, such a big bunch. So he's walking towards the room. I was right there at the entrance, so that the footsteps. I mean, at the entrance to the door. But he gives me one shot with all the letters on my head. Where are you from? Madras. Madras. Hmm. Goes inside. So we go. Sit down. Okay, his interview was for some more couples were there and some foreigners were there. And all that individual sessions weren't starting. General session and then individually he says, ah, you come. So Swami sitting down on his right side, to his right. In the floor, Chitra and Mahesh. To his left, me and my wife. He doesn't look my side. This side, he never looks. So throughout the first five, seven minutes, he's talking to Mahesh and Chitra and this, that, this, that. And then he's telling them, why are you fighting so much? This, everything. Then Chitra felt a little... Uh, Anxious that so far he has not even turned and looked at us. So he said, Swami, my friend uh, Mohan and his wife Padma. Hmm, there you hmm, I know. Then turned, looked at me and said, You know what all words he has said about me? What can you say? She knew because I've told her the words that he is a, a trickster, he is a magician, he is this, he is everything under the sun. In the last year, Karterima in Tamil, I didn't know what to do. Fortunately, I was sitting so close, I just held on to his feet. And my wife by then was in a total blissful state, teared with joy, tears of joy and this. I just held on to his face. Then he looks at me. Bangaro, why do you say so many bad words about me? And then hold my feet like this. Be neutral. And then he, he, he shifted from here he came to our side and then spoke to us. That was the beginning. 15th January 1986. When you could say I officially entered. Having had this experience, I go back home. Now, I believe in Bhagwan Sri Sati Sai Baba. I bought pictures there for the puja. I bought books. I still remember uh, the volume 1, 2, 3, 4 of Satyam Shivam Sundaram, um, Hislop's book, and uh, my Baba and I, and Samuel Sandwise, uh, psychiatrist. Whatever I could lay my hands on at uh, the bookstall I bought and we came back. 
and uh, I started reading about Swami. His life, his miraculous life, his 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 uh, his avatar. And the more I read, the more I was convinced. And in my house, one thing, even though everyone has his or her belief, we respect other people's belief. We never, uh, except me, who was criticizing my wife for uh, keeping Swami's picture in the puja. And we used to do the Aarti. Uh, she used to do Aarti on Thursday. On Thursday, she used to do that. And we became, uh, started coming in and I used to visit Sundaram for bhajans. We found neighbors, one Mr. Rangsami Ayengar and his wife, uh, Mrs. Devaki and their son, uh, who incidentally was the lead singer in, I shouldn't use the word lead singer, was the singer in uh, Sundaram, Dev Narayan. They was pretty famous because the Sundaram Ashtotram and Sahasranamam are sung by him as well as um, several famous bhajans. Uh, anyway, so they were our neighbors. So I used to go to their house and Sai Satsang started. In the house we were, uh, there was no... Uh, animosity or uh, nobody was objecting to it. Slowly, truth started coming. My wife told me about the dream which she had when my father was not well. Then my mother comes up with the story and says, in 1976, this is a good 10 years before uh, what uh, happened. She says she was um, in Kodaikanal walking and that was the year I had finished my graduation. I had written the entrance exam for IIM Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta and XLRI. I had received uh, a regret letter from Ahmedabad and uh, no, from Calcutta and Bangalore. And uh, my mother was worried because she didn't know what I would like, what I would be doing. Uh, in future, where is he going to go? Because I had applied only to these four places. So either I get it or don't get it. And she was walking around the lake when Swami and a couple of devotees were walking in the opposite side. Those were days when Swami used to walk around the lake. Can you imagine? He was walking and he just uh, looked at my mother, beckoned her and said, uh, Are you worried about your son? Don't worry, he'll be all right. Believe you me, couple of days later, I get a letter from XLRI saying you've been called for uh, your written test is okay. You're now required for a personal interview. She didn't tell me. I went for the personal interview, got the admission, I finished the course. Thank you, Swami. And uh, she didn't tell me. And my grandmother, that is my father's mother, when Swami used to come to Madras in the 1960s, she used to regularly go for his uh, evening satsang and discourse. And he used to, my grandmother wore a hearing aid. So Swami used to ask Kamala Sarthi, uh, madam, who used to play the violin in Sundaram, he used to ask her, I believe, where is your friend with the machine? So people in my fa family have had sort of private links with Swami. It was my wife who literally brought him into the house officially. 1986. All this has happened. In two years time, Swami, my, my trips to Puttaparthi increased. But uh, row number 43, seat number 84, 
somewhere in the back, but I never was. I just had darshan and came back. Darshan came back. Darshan. Whatever I had to write, I'd say, I put in a letter, put it in the box, and kept kept it in the hand during darshan. If nothing, if Swami didn't take it, put it in the post box there. And we had uh, we had uh, great darshans. In Kodai Canal, 1988, Swami is there in Kodi. My mother, my father, we had a house. We have a house. We had a house, sorry. And uh, Swami was due to visit the house of Mr. V. D. Swami, industrialist, and his wife. Uh, Vasantha Mami. She and uh, my mother and my Mrs. Swami and my father are all close friends. So Mrs. Swami calls up my mother and says, look, Baba is coming to my house tomorrow. I need some elderly ladies to serve the food. So will you come and help me? My mother said, why not? So my mother goes to Swami's, uh, B.D. Swami's house. There, as she's standing in the entrance, Baba comes and uh, now I'm going to use the word uh, Baba because there's a VD Swami is in the picture. So Swami, when I say Swami, it shouldn't get confused. So Baba comes and uh, looks at my mother and says, Ah, when did you come? And she said, uh, then he is introducing my mother to Mrs. Swami. Advocate General wife. My father was Advocate General way back uh, in 77. But Swami throughout was always calling my dad Advocate General. And then he says, Nalla Paduanga. Then come, come. Let us all go. And he quickly goes inside the house and tells my mother to start singing. My mother is a grade A All India Radio concert uh, artist trained and she even now at the age of 80 she still teaches uh, people music Carnatic music so Swami says that you sing and then he joins her they both singing then Mrs. Swami also sings a little so he says Vasanta Nikuda Pada there was a half an hour music concert at the end of it Swami turns and says, Apra, what, what more do you want to my mother? And she says, uh, my husband, huh? bring him tomorrow. Bring him tomorrow. So my mom and dad go to Sai Shruti in uh, Kodakana. And my father, he called me after the interview. He says, I went I was straight taken in and made to sit in a sofa there. After he finished all the darshan and all that, he comes and uh, I don't know what happened and why it happened. The moment I saw him, I fell at his feet. I have never fallen at the feet of another human being except my father. That's what my father told me. So he called me and says, hey, your Baba blessed me, this, that, the other. From Kotekanal, he's calling. In those days, where phone, no cell phone, love. STD had to be. <clears throat> Moment I heard this, I said, okay, I'm packing my bags. I'm also coming to Kodi. My wife and I, we went. 86, we were drafted. I mean, 88, we were given interviews. The 89 season. You could probably say was our season. As I told you earlier, you you are given a, a short period of time if you are blessed or if it is in your karma. I guess it is everyone who is under Swami's fold, who is under his vision, who is under his gaze is blessed. We were triply blessed. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we did some seva in the days of Rama, uh, 
uh, as a uh, part of the monkey army or maybe Krishna, we were probably the goats, I mean the cows or cow herds, I don't know. 88-89 full full as I said I just located this uh, diary of mine thanks to Samarpan I, I saw and every every day of that season in 1989 I had recorded here and uh, I am envious and jealous of what happened to me. I am jealous of myself because I am not going to get that again. Every day two Pada Namaskars and after 89 till Swami Samadhi, no Pada Namaskar. No, actually, sorry, we got. Amazing experience was 88 and 89. In 1989, what happened was, uh, I'm, I'm jumping. All this was the preliminary story of how I came to Swami. But uh, thereafter, 88, 89, Swami said, in 1989, you could say was the watershed year. <clears throat> what does a devotee want from Swami? Everything that any devotee will want Swami from Swami, Swami gave that year. <clears throat> I received food from Swami. Not once, twice, maybe 20, 30 times. More. I still remember uh, he was distributing. But, uh, I'll give you a little brief on that. Uh, that year, 1989, <laughs> I had a dream and uh, Swami said, come to Kodi. I said, dad is coming only on 14th. He said, you come. So I left early. He said, I'm leaving for Madras in two, three days. Uh, leaving for Kodakana in two, three days, you come. He gave me the date of his departure from uh, Puttaparthi. I quietly went. I was there when Swami arrived. Ah, come, come, come. And that year, I was part of the student body. 88, it was all MBA students. 89, there was a mixture of both PhD students and uh, MBA students. So, I was, I was considered part of the student body. So, I was with him because my parents hadn't come. So, he said, they are in Lala, nobody is there. So, you have breakfast, lunch, dinner here. And evening Tiffin also. So I was living. I was living in Sai Shruti. Except in the night, I'll go back. And then every every two, three days, he'll ask. Every poor I said, uh, no. Irrit? Is it dark? No, no, no. I'll manage. It's a walking distance, about one, one kilometer. He, he has given me food. Not once or twice. And I still remember one day he was distributing badams to everybody. And I was standing there and Colonel Jogarao was there. Both of us are stout people. So he comes, gives it to him. Then he looks at me and says, already you are overweight. You too, Jogarao. And then he is turning to go away. And then he puts his hand in. To everybody, he gave only so much. To both of us, he picks up so much and says, Papa. Soft, thin to thin. To. That was the love. So as I said, he has given me food. I have served him food. I have washed his hands. I have driven a car with Swami inside. Everything looks hazy, looks like a dream. But it's truth. Now, I have a feeling that I'm extending my time, but uh, because I have not balanced the experiences that in that year, Sri Ramanavami, it was the 
I fortunately I had the notes. I could get the date. If I remember right, it was the twenty third of April when he visited home, my house, rather my father's house in Kanal, and he blessed us by taking food there. There is this famous Jula photograph of Swami. If you see one photograph where uh, there'll be a Jula, a pear tree, and uh, on lawn, um, and Swami will be sitting. That was taken in our house. My wife had decorated the Jula specifically, and Swami came out in the garden and suddenly saw the Jula for me and said yes. And so he sat and posed for photographs. Then he called the family. All of us stood. Uh, Amazing time, and that that season was uh, <clears throat> that was uh, literally what should I say peak season, and uh, Swami, where is that? Uh, I'm uh, uh, Meena Lagnam, Meena Lagnam, Shravana Natchatram, Meena Lagnam. So one evening he was giving his discourse. We were all sitting. My dad and mom hadn't come. Nobody had come. I was, as I told you, I was his ward. His guy. He was my guardian. He still is my guardian. So suddenly at six fifteen in the evening, he looks at the watch and he says, "Shravana Natchatram, Meena Lagna. He put a Ramu to puttar. I was born, and then he did this. Brought out a, a beaut." Beautifully, intricately carved figure of Rama. Called me, put it in my pocket, and said, "Chudadi, see it. See how detailed the carving is. See the detailing of the nose and the mouth and the eyebrows." I said, "I was shell shocked because just ten minutes before that, I had given a lecture on." Swami said, uh, "Talk about management." So I spoke on uh, Satya Dharma, Shanti, Prema, and Ahimsa, and how they should be Satya in your uh, corporate philosophy, Shanti in your HR. Um, I had divided the management, <clears throat> production, uh, personnel, marketing, finances, and general management, and. Put all of them into this and link the two and said the Swami's principles how they apply to good corporate uh, governance and philosophy. And Swami liked it so much. He, in fact, he started quoting it again and again and again. Um, he gave the idea in my head, not my idea. He gave the idea in my head. He made me say it, and then. So having said that, he gave that Rama. Next morning, next evening, he says, "How is Rama?" I thought he is referring to my father, VP Rama. I said, "He is coming on 14th, Adilla Pa. How is the Rama I gave you?" I said, "Beautiful, sir. No, no, he is complaining. He is complaining that he is alone." And did waved his hands again. This time, Sita gave it. I said, "Take it home. Keep both together. They are still adorning a place in our puja." And then, of course, in '88 he had given me a ring. '89 he gave me a ring. By '97, '96 the rings went away. He took it back. They, I think, they served their purpose of uh, protecting me. When Swami came home, he. He did everything. He what did he not do? What did he not do? He gave my father a chain. He gave all the women in the house earrings. Uh, both my brothers, he gave rings. And uh, my son. Oh, there's this uh, famous um, YouTube video, which all of you people as side devotees must have seen. Swami. Explaining the Gayatri mantra, Gayatri Chandasa Mata, Gayatri Savitri, five names of Gayatri, etc. That is my son's uh, Upanayana. 
performed by that you will probably see my white uh, shirt backdrop my wife and my son you can clearly see in the video that swami has performed uh, upanayanam in may 1989 and uh, he blessed all of us every single member of the family Ninety one, my father passed away. I took my grandmother; she was alive. Took my grandmother, went there. First thing Swami said was, "How many times to save him?" He wouldn't listen. My father used to drink. He'll give up, then he'll go back. He'll give up, he'll go back. In fact, twice, thrice in uh, Whitefield, he has gone after having a drink. People asked Swami. Said this, you are going and talking to him. You are putting your hand on his shoulders or not? This man is smelling of uh, alcohol. Do you know what Swami said? All of you are looking at the outside. I am looking at the inside. Bangar. I am not justifying my dad's behavior. Absolutely unjustifiable. Person was sick. Swami recognized it, and his last years he spent in bliss of Swami. That was his uh, reward for being a person of immense integrity. That's what Swami said. Very difficult for a man to observe satya when he is an advocate, and your father has done it. In the pet, the advocate. He has told me. So it's it's not uh, something that uh, you know. I'm advocating that kind of behavior. What I'm saying is, you can't fool Swami. You can't fool Swami. Now, if you see all these vibhuta and all, I'm, I'm not trying to fool anybody. I just performed my. Um, tarpanam and after tarpanam Brahma yagyam. So therefore, I. Otherwise, I'm not uh, like this. I have, I do wear vibhuti, but only a small uh, piece here. I mean, small, small bit here. What I'm trying to say, is Swami, is beyond all these uh, uh, dramas we can make for the rest of the world. You can't fool him. So when Father passed away, I went with uh, a big list, some ten points. What to do this? What to do that? What to do? No. We went big family. Both brothers, their wives, the kids, everybody. My mother, my grandmother also. Two days. He didn't even look at my side. Third day. Ah. When did you come? Said two days. Evening goes. So I go back and tell everybody. So everybody is happy. Evening we go in. My daughter was born on the fourth of uh, November. Father passed away second December. All this ninety uh, one. This uh, all this is happening. The so second December means around twentieth of December. First thing he says, "Ah, huh? daughter. Yesterday was uh, Navami. Day for yesterday, Ashtami. That's why I didn't call you, because we have to give a name for her. No. See, we actually went for a condolence meeting. He converted that to a naming ceremony, to a joyous occasion." And he gave her the name Vidyulekha, and he told me, we have told all of us where it comes from. Nila toya the madhya sat Vidyulekha va basvara, and gave the meaning. And then my other brother's son was also maybe six elder. He materialized some raisins, put it in his mouth because the fellow was the child was constantly 
blabbering. So he just put it in his mouth and <laughs> shut him up. And I had this list of things to do. Uh, ask Swami for guidance. You know what to do with this, what to do with that. What to do. He didn't allow me to take the paper out. So if, uh, so, Kodakandal weed enna panna poringa. Idha enna panna poringa. Adi pudi pani danga. Idha pudi pani danga. Do this. Do it that way. Do this this way. Do it that. Answered all, and then some more points which did not strike me. He answered everything, and then he, in the end, he said. Ah, Chudu, see if you've got anything left. So then I pull out the paper from the pocket. Nothing is left. He's covered this and more. That's why Swami says, when you write something, what you have is only the carbon copy. Original is already reached him. I've seen this. I've seen this a million times in Kodakanar. Somebody will come, postman will come with the letters, and Swami will just take this, he will just do this, do this, do this, he'll just sort of sort it out and then pull all these and say, hey boys, your parents have written. And then he'll just fish through that, pull out something and say, tell some boy, Krishnamurti or some name, your father says that Bhajan Mandir is ready there. Huh? See it. No, no, wait, he's written something personal also. And then you open it, open the letter, show only that paragraph about the Bhajan Mandir to the boy and close it. This is all coming from the postman, sir. Before opening, he will. The miracles that he did there in Kodaikanal, everywhere, by Kodaikanal, Puttaparthi, today in my house. Every day is a miracle. Every day is a miracle and every day is a blessing from Swami. If you have that faith and that belief, beautiful. As I said, my father had passed away and uh, I'm going to finish it with the story. I was confused. I knew that he was not a believer. Uh, so I was wondering, do I do all the Tarpan of Amavasa and annual Shraddha ceremony and everything. Because he was not a believer. Why should uh, I didn't want to offend his soul. And I was just thinking to myself, do I do it or not do it? So I was just walking into Sundaram after the 13th day is over with the purification and all that. And then I walked to Sundaram. I was sitting down there. As bhajans got over, everybody knew who I was and they knew. And so many of them said, Sai Ram, sorry to hear about this. Then Mr. Ramani, who was the coordinator, then later became state president. Ramani walks up and says, Sai Ram. I said, Sai Ram, sorry to hear about father. I said, and as I told you, this was the question in my mind. Ramani comes up and he says, I remember what Baba told me when my father passed away. He told me, you have a certain heritage as a person who has come from a Brahmin family. You have a certain heritage. You have a certain culture. You have certain duties. Do everything. I was thinking, should I do? Swami called me and said, do everything. I, I didn't know what to say. I just said, thank you, sir. This was the query I had in mind. I walk into Sundaram and you are giving me the exact answer that I want to hear. Do everything. And I'm narrating this incident on an Amavasya after I've done Tarpanam for my father and his forefathers and my forefathers. Ladies, brothers and sisters, I can go on about Swami. What I did was just touched uh, the outline, the just the <clears throat> sorry, the play he did in 1989 is enough 
for three lectures like this. So why I am saying all this is, maybe Swami will give me more opportunities to come and share with you the various absolutely wonderful miracles that he has done in my life. And the biggest miracle was the change he brought about in me. Everything else you can forget, sir. Everything else. To get a man to change the way he thinks, that is the miracle. The rest of it are meaningless miracles in the, in the real sense of the word. What difference will a bracelet do or a chain do? What, what difference will it do if the man's heart and head is filled with uh, hate and uh, everything else that is negative? So, I think the biggest miracle Swami does is the change he brings about in each one of us, in our hearts, in our minds, because he is the keeper of all souls. All our souls are with him. <clears throat> he is the guardian of that. This physical body needs purity. So he comes to give that. Gentlemen, ladies, brothers and sisters, these are pandemic times. All of us are going through difficulty. All of us are having a very tough time in earning, spending time and spending everything. Don't worry. Just put your faith in him. He will look after. He has always looked after us. He will continue to look after us. Why? Because it is his duty. He called me one day and said, Hey, <clears throat> your friends will all be with you only as long as there is money in your purse. I am the only person who is going to be with you forever. Because my love for you is that of a thousand mothers. With that, let me assure you, Swami's love to each and every one of us is that of a thousand mothers. Be very, very sure of that. Only when you are sure of that, that love will come. Otherwise, like a clogged pipe, you have blocked it. Free the pipe. Let that love flow. It look after all of us. Jai Sai Ram, Jai Sai Ram, Jai Sai Ram. Thank you. And Jai Sai Ram, Mohan Raman, sir. I think the most excellent key takeaway we can cherish is Swami looking only at the positives. You were virulent in hatred and criticizing a lot about Swami. Maybe we can even remember Mr. Jagdishan from Malaysia who was similar in intensity. But Swami put it so nicely in the interview in 1989 that one can hate but not so much. One should be neutral and diplomatic. So that was a very excellent lesson conveyed by Bhagwan that we must always look at the positives. Even when the world was looking at the outside of your habits of your relative, close relative, and Swami had put his arms around the shoulders and when the devotees were looking and complaining that he was drinking, but Swami said about his heart, Swami said the additional Solicitor General's heart was full of truth and to maintain truth in a legal profession over a lifetime is an amazing experience to be shared. So I advocate V.P. Raman's heart and the blessings of even your ancestors were a great lesson. Also your visit with the devotee Mahesh the guitarist and his wife Chitra and the amount of love and affection Swami bestowed in 1989. And the most beautiful insight was, you know, there are times when Swami gives and gives in plenty and we must cherish that.
and we must cherish those lessons even over a walk in 1970s when your mother was worried and concerned about your career and swami said everything will be fine with your son and you went on to do your management degree in xlri was another moment to cherish and a blessing which we all can aspire for even in your career the bank incident of praying to baba that you know so many lives are dependent and you need to go to the bank and swami heard your prayers and the stomach pain was gone it was a beautiful way swami entered your life dreams matching reality the voice in the dream and the voice in the reality the bhajans in the dream and the bhajans in the reality i think this was something amazing and the most humble aspect was you know with all your habits and all your vices still saw me blessed and you have now changed and the most amazing transformation that one can cherish is the transformation of the mind and the heart and the ultimate lesson that i am your true friend and i have a love of thousand mothers i am sure many of us have experienced this love of bhagwan as a student or as a devotee but to get this blessing was indeed amazing and your memories of kodaikanal and puttaparthi and those golden period from 1986 to 1989 will be etched in our hearts and minds so be it management lectures be it your career naming of your daughter even umpteen number of times swami blessed you with the opportunity to have food and also serve bhagwan with food i think it's an icing on the cake that swami has blessed you with everything and if your generations can be connected with bhagwan for 14 generations that is what we know we don't know about much more which only swami is aware but we must thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we once again on this independence day and the 123rd edition of samarpan cherish this lesson that only swami is our true friend for life even now and forever jai sai ram thank you